You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Hey, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi had unveiled her impeachment team, the folks who are going to lay out the case as to why Donald Trump should be convicted by the United States Senate. Uh, here's what she had to say. So today I'm very proud to present the managers who will bring the case, which we have great confidence in, in terms of impeaching the president and his removal. But this further evidence insist of that, and we wouldn't be in this situation had we not waited, insist that there be, that there be witnesses and that we see documentation. And now you see some of that change happening on the Senate side. I hope it does for the good of our country and to honor our Constitution. So today, on the floor, we'll pass a resolution naming the managers, as I mentioned, appropriating the funds for the trial and transmitting the articles of impeachment of the President of the United States for trying to influence a foreign government for his own personal and political benefit. Chair Adam Schiff of California, our lead manager, Chairman Schiff, uh, uh, is, as you know, chair of the Permanent Select Committee <coughs> on Intelligence, is serving his 10th term in Congress. <coughs> Excuse me. Before Congress, Mr. Schiff was a California state senator and served as a federal prosecutor in the U.S. Attorney's Office in Los Angeles for six years, most notably prosecuting the first federal FBI agent ever to be indicted for espionage. <laughs> Chairman Jerry Nadler, chair of the House Judiciary Committee, is serving his 15th term in Congress. Mr. Nadler served as the top Democrat on the Judiciary Subcommittee on Constitution, Civil Rights, and Civil Liberties for 13 years. Before Congress, Mr. Nadler served in the New York State Assembly for 16 years. Wow. Chair Zoe Lofgren, Chair Zoe Lofgren, Chair of the House Committee on House Administration, which has jurisdiction over federal elections, is a senior member of the House Judiciary Committee. Ms. Lofgren is serving her 13th term in Congress. This is Chairwoman Lofgren's third impeachment as a Judiciary Co Committee staffer in the Nixon impeachment, as a member of the Judiciary Committee on the Clinton impeachment, and now as a manager in this impeachment of President Trump. Chair Hakeem Jeffries of New York. Chairman Hakeem Jeffries is the chair of the House Democratic Caucus and is currently serving his fourth, fourth term in Congress. He's a member of the House Judiciary Committee. Uh, before being in Congress, he served in the Assembly of New York for six years, an accomplished litigator in private practice before running for elective office. Mr. Jeffrey, Jeffrey's church for, clerked for the Honorable Howard Baer, Jr. of New York District Court for the Southern District of New York. Congresswoman Val Deming, Demings of Florida, Congresswoman Val Demings is a member of both the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence and the House Judiciary Committee. Ms. Demings serving her second term in Congress. Before Congress, Ms. Demings served as the Orlando Police Department for 27 years, part of that time as the first woman police chief in Orlando. Congressman, excuse me, Congressman Jason Crow of Colorado is a member of the House Armed Services Committee. Mr. Crow served his country, our country, bravely as an Army Ranger in Iraq and Afghanistan. Before coming, running for Congress, uh, Mr. Crow was a respected litigator in private practice in Colorado. Congresswoman Sylvia Garcia of Texas. Congresswoman Sylvia Garcia is a member of the House Judiciary Committee. Before Congress, Ms. Cong Ms. Garcia was served in Texas State Senate previously. Uh, she was the director and presiding judge of the Houston Municipal System and was elected city controller. Ms. Garcia was later elected the first Hispanic and first woman to be elected in her own right to the Harris County Commissioner's Court. As you can see uh, from these uh, 
descriptions of the emphasis is on litigators. The emphasis is on comfort level in the courtroom. The emphasis is making the strongest possible case to protect and defend our Constitution, to seek the truth for the American people. I'm very proud and honored that these seven members, distinguished members, have accepted this serious responsibility, again, to protect and defend for the people defending our democracy. All right, folks, let's go to our panel. We have Teresa Lundy, of course, a PR expert out of Philadelphia. Of course, Eugene Craig, CEO of Eugene Craig Organization, Republican strategist, and also Malik Abdul, also Republican strategist. Teresa, I'll start with you. It was very interesting. Everybody's been talking about how all, some of these different people, oh, Nancy Pelosi, she messed up. Uh, she should not have delayed all of this. But the reality is her delay is what caused this new evidence to come forward. And it also let, put in the pressure, her as well as Senator Chuck Schumer, on folks like Mitt Romney and others to say there needs to be witnesses. Uh, and so looks like Speaker Pelosi knew exactly what she was doing. Well, that's why Nancy Pelosi needed a month's time in order to present uh, the managers to the public. Um, I'm 50-50 on agreement here uh, with the managers that she selected. Um, I do believe there, as much as, uh, you know, she talked about patriotism with a lot of the veterans, um, I do believe she should have had a little bit more diversity with some of the new uh, incoming uh, class of House members. Um, because I do believe they also lend a voice to this much needed conversation. And it also would have built uh, together more a, of a unity um, in this discussion versus uh, just kind of seeming like the old guard doing their thing. Um, Eugene, your thoughts again. You look at the team that she's assembled. You have uh, Congresswoman Val Demings, African American, uh, former sheriff out of, of Florida. You also have, of course, uh, uh, Congressman Hakeem Jeffries as well. Uh, uh, and again, I, what's interesting here is that what Mitch McConnell desperately wanted, he wanted them to send over the send over uh, the, uh, the the impeachment uh, article so they can quickly dismiss him. They've now put the pressure on them where they're going to actually look like uh, it was all a sham by doing that. And so it seems to be her strategy made a lot of sense by forcing them to wait. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and what worked in her favor is that in this time span in which she made the Senate wait, you've seen all type of other evidence that had been submitted to the Intel Committee, but now it's come out publicly, uh, just particularly yesterday, where you had a, a, this congressional candidate that's running in Connecticut 5 literally following uh, Yovanovitch, following and tracking a United States ambassador with the help of Rudy Giuliani uh, with veiled threats. And so I think that's going to be a game changer. Um, in regards to the actual House impeachment managers, I think it's a pretty pretty good team she put together. Um, you know, Adam Schiff was a skilled prosecutor before he was a member of Congress. Uh, you know, Jerry Nattler uh, served on judiciary forever, essentially. Um, the only thing I probably, if I was there, probably would have, you know, helped press is uh, to add Justin Amash. Um, you know, I think there's nobody that uh, has the foremost uh, strength on the Constitution and constitutional issues in the House than Justin Amash. Malik? Well, it's about time. Um, good thing she actually transferred those articles over. Um, I'm going to disagree with you because I don't think that she actually got any of her concessions here. Um, what Mitch McConnell said is that they were going to follow the precedent that was set in the 98 impeachment trial against Clinton, where they had their initial um, panel, well, their initial hearings where both sides would be able to present their case. The House manager, you know, the impeachment managers would be able to present their case and the president, his defense team would be able to um, present their case. And then the second part of that, which is what he said, is that then they would consider whether or not they need witnesses at that point. So Nancy Pelosi, she didn't pressure Mitch McConnell to do anything different than what Mitch McConnell said that he was going to do. So it seems as if, if all goes as what we're hearing now, is exactly what I said. They're going to have a first part where the managers are going to come in and present their case. And then they're going to consider on the second part of that, whether or not they need to bring additional witnesses in. But I think that's probably a good idea to see whether or not you need additional witnesses considering what we're talking about as far as the articles that we already know exist. So we'll see what happens. But, yeah, but, I, but, but, but 
but the thing is this. The thing is this. But right? but the addition but the addition the additional witnesses, Melik. Now that we have this information of the individuals who were working with um, uh, Rudy Giuliani, now that we have that information, now that uh, where we have notes where they were actually following this ambassador, uh, where back and forth, that has a direct bearing on this case. Had Nancy Pelosi sit over those articles right after the House voted, uh, we would not have had this information. That's what changes. And so now the question is, will Republicans totally ignore that and say, ah, no big deal. Mitch McConnell's now going to have to explain how do you completely ignore this new information? Melek and Eugene. Well, as I said, Mitch McConnell, at, I mean, we're going with what he said and what, you know, everybody around him is saying is that they're going to follow the precedent that was set in the Clinton impeachment trial. So, yes, they probably... Okay, they, but, 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 but Melek, here's my whole point. Here's my point. You did not have new info... In, in the Clinton impeachment yeah. trial, you did not have the House take their action... Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, some new information that had a direct bearing on those articles of impeachment taking place between what the House vote and going to the Senate. And so you keep referring back to the Clinton impeachment. I get those rules, but the new evidence is what changes the game here. Well, to repeat it again, they're going to present their case, both sides are going to present their case in the first part, and then, as Mitch McConnell said, they're going to consider whether or not they bring well, witnesses, but that's a consideration. Whether or not it happens, we don't know that right oh, now, but happen. they've already put it out there, saying that they would consider whether to bring additional witnesses for the second part. I'm not sure if the information that we have thus far actually informs the obstruction of justice, um, I'm sorry, the obstruction, obstruction of Congress um, article that they filed and the other article, I can't think of what the um, other article was, but I don't know if what that, if the, what happened with the ambassador, does that inform the actual impeachment proceedings? Does that change anything? Is there anything that we can draw from what Rudy Giuliani or whoever that was that was following the ambassador or something? Is that something that better informs or give people a better indication that this was a quid pro quo, quo because that's where we started, this being a quid pro quo. So I don't know what information we're going to be able to glean from the the situation with the ambassador that helps the in, our, the actual articles that were filed. Eugene, you, you go ahead, love, I'm sorry. You gotta love when folk like Malik try to defend the indefensible. The thing is this, all right, as if we stand right here right now, you have upwards of 10 Republican senators that have given somewhat public statements that they want to see witnesses. Folk like Lisa Murkowski to more conservative folk like up to Ted Cruz and Mike Lee. So absolutely, we're going to have witnesses uh, testify in this Senate impeachment trial. Um, the, the other thing is this. Um, the way that Republicans are trying to frame this is, is that, you know, that the trial already happened in the House and this is an, an appeal situation. It's not. You know, the House served as a grand jury, and the trial needs to happen. And Mitch McConnell, you know, is now in a position not to deny a trial. You know, you know, you know. The, what came out over the weekend is that the votes are not there to just blank, blanketly dismiss. And so, what what's being what's being shown is that Republican senators are one, they're in the, in the cover their own ass mode. But secondly, um, you know, they're taking their jobs seriously, especially folk that are constitutional conservatives and they, you know, have, and quote unquote stood up for the Constitution their entire careers. And so you're going to see an actual trial. You're going to see witnesses presented. And Nancy Pelosi, you know, I, I like to call her female Batman, you know, the tactician that she is, her delaying sending the, the articles of impeachment over, you know, has allowed for the new evidence to take place. And here we are now where you have people like Ted Cruz and more conservative senators. I mean, Lamar Alexander, there's any more establishment than Lamar Alexander saying, hey, listen, I want to hear from witnesses. And, 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 and it's only going to keep crumbling the more witnesses and the more information that comes out. Yeah, and just to follow and, up... And look, and look... Uh, and yeah, just to, just to follow up on that, there was nothing that I actually defended. I actually informed the audience of what the process is and what we know thus far. So if that is defending, then yeah, I guess. But I mean, again... To say, to say that but, there's nothing that, but, that, there's but, nothing that justifies but, but, but again, the Congress 
charge of impeachment. Yeah, but, but again, when literally the White so, House stonewalled all the committees. Okay, you know, so, so I'll just let you finish fake, my point. Fake I'll, I'll let you finish my point, since that's, 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 that's the point you it, made. That, that's what it seems as if you would like to do. It's the point set. you made. Well, it's not the point that I made, and I've rolling on your show. I've actually said before that I'm perfectly fine with witness, witnesses testifying. I said that on your show, and anybody who chooses to check that they can do that. You literally so whatever, said that so you whatever it is that, that you, the, so whatever it is that you're defending, okay, justified. well, at this point, I'm not talking to Eugene, I'm talking to Roland. So, Roland and your guests, once again, Mitch McConnell said that they're going to consider whether or not to bring witnesses in the second part of this hearing, the impeachment hearing process. He said, and I'll repeat it again, he said they're going to consider bringing witnesses. I believe that that's probably something they're, they're going to do, but that's not a defending anything, that's just telling, giving you a layout of where we are. Eugene, the final comment from Teresa. The thing is this, um, we're in a constitutional crisis here. Um, the, one of the beauties of an actual impeachment trial is that you have uh, the Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court right there uh, managing the whole situation. So this will be in a situation, we'll, we'll be in a position where the White House won't necessarily be able to stonewall, you know, you can't invoke some fake executive privilege. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see where, where the chips fall with the actual trial. You want to check out Roller Martin Unfiltered? YouTube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roland Martin Unfiltered. See that name right there? Roland Martin Unfiltered. Like, share, subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's YouTube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And don't forget to turn on your notifications so when we go live, you'll know it. Martin.